tell me a little bit about your transition from traditional journalism into data science. So I actually ended up studying financial math and statistics. So my my degree ended up being in a very technical field, but my prior work experience was working at the Sacramento News and Review as a freelance journalist, also an intern, and then working for the Associated Press as an investigative news intern. Um, so the transition was a lot of work that I did on my own, really. Just um, I, uh, as a journalist, I felt like I had reached a certain limit uh, sometimes with interviews. And even from a young age, when I was working um, at my high school newspaper, we did a lot with Census Bureau data and just sort of trying to extract as much information from that as possible. So just sort of trying to figure out as much as I could with the available tools that I had and the available data I had. Um, I still love to dig around in Census Bureau data. <laughs> well, you have a role as a data scientist where you're, you know, doing deep data, you know, analysis. What kind of tools are you using to do that? So I started out using R, um, which is open source statistical programming software. And now I primarily work in Python, um, which is just a general purpose programming language. And um, the sort of you know, I write programs using a text editor and run them through Python. Um, we do work off of databases, but I also work off a lot of CSVs and flat files and just sort of conduct my analysis that way. So, so pretty, you know, not, not the fanciest stuff, like really open source stuff, things that people can, you know, I think even Code Academy teaches Python, so. Absolutely. Um, I think that there's going to be, a, there's already been a move away from proprietary software. Um, SAS is a wonderful tool, but it's prohibitively costly for a lot of businesses, and I don't think it's necessarily the best tool available if you know what you're doing. Um, so I would really encourage people to to learn Python or to learn basic programming. Um, what is the big takeaway you want people to, to get from your panel today? And not your panel, it was your presentation, from, sorry. From my, my 13 minute talk. Um, I guess it's just sort of that at their core, journalism and data science are very similar in that in one, you take qualitative information and use it to paint a story, to sort of stitch together, to use disparate pieces of information and create a news article, for example. And in another, even if you're working with quantitative data, you can still tease a narrative out of that, and you can still tell a story with the data. So uh, by focusing on the storytelling component of it and sort of trying to make that information more accessible and more palatable. Whatever you recommend for upcoming journalists. Um, I would say that type, the structure, the setup, and typing data together is probably the hardest part. And the most time-consuming part is the data cleansing process. I spend more time than anything sort of visualizing the data and trying to figure out what data to keep and which data to discard. And that's, um, that's the longest part of the process. I don't know if you sew, but yeah. um, when you sew, most of what you do is sort of laying out your fabric, measuring, cutting, pinning, ironing. Very little of it is actually sewing, and there's sort of the equivalent situation with data analysis. But most of what you do is just sort of the legwork to get to the point where you can actually conduct the data analysis. So um, that part of it is slightly less, less glamorous, I guess. If you think that any part of it is glamorous, which, which is questionable.